the big breakdown, I think, is people are conflating two very different issues. And it's almost like one is overtaking the other. Uh, and that, that first is some automakers are negotiating for access to the superchargers and some are not. And that is an issue in and of itself. So Ford started that ball rolling, then GM jumped in, then Rivian, then Mercedes. And now we have news that, that Nissan is as well. And that is confusing this issue because I think the other aspect is we're looking at a new CCS standard. And I need to emphasize that it is not a new Tesla standard. It's not a Tesla standard at all, in fact. In fact, it is a new CCS standard that's incorporating J1772 and CCS protocols into the Tesla plug. So essentially it's taking outside of Chatamo, every plug that we know in North America is basically all being consolidated under a single standard. Some facet of that plug or standard is being applied. And so the SAE is currently putting all of those together, right, to form this new plug standard. And so that's why I say it's a very different issue than accessing the superchargers, because that's a deal that automakers are cutting on the side. And in fact, GM's uh, press release notes that they are doubling down on their focus on charging infrastructure for their EV owners. And so what does that mean? Their number one partner is still EVgo. They're not dropping that partnership. EVgo is still building out hundreds and hundreds of those 350 kilowatt sites. Uh, the Flying J partnership is still going forward. But in addition to that, GM brokered a deal with Tesla to gain access to those 12,000 CCS compatible superchargers in North America. And that's where I say this, this breakdown is happening is there are 20,000 plus CCS or there are 20,000 plus supercharger stalls throughout North America. 8,000 of them are the Tesla standard only. Those ones, nobody's going to get access to. They won't be magic dock. We've talked about this before, I think, Steve. Maybe they'll get ripped out of the ground. Maybe they'll get converted to uh, version four superchargers. Um, but in the meantime, those 8,000 stalls are essentially Tesla only. It's those 12,000 stalls that Ford, GM, Rivian, Mercedes, Nissan are all um, working with Tesla to gain access to. So that's that's that issue. And Hyundai is balking, uh, Lucid is balking, right? And why? They're purely 800 volt architecture EV companies moving forward. And the superchargers, the V3 superchargers, speaking to your experience, Steve, they just don't work well for eGMP cars. They don't work well for Lucid. Um, they they work half well for the GMC Hummer EV, right? Uh, because it can it can toggle full on between 400 volt and 800 volt. Um, but it, it, that that's a separate issue, right? And everybody's looking at this as a huge Tesla win. And I want I want to be clear about this, Steve, too, because I know some people would assume that I would be negative about this. I think this is a net benefit. And the more and initially I was a little bit worried, but the more I listened to Jim Farley, the more I listened to Mary Barra, RJ Scarringe, these different CEOs from the different companies talking about this, this is a net benefit for everyone. Now, like you in the in the Hyundai Ionic 5, Ionic 6, Kia EV6, all of those 800 volt car owners, this is gonna be limited benefit for you for the next two to three years. Not until uh, Hyundai adopts the new SAE plug standard with this new Tesla plug um, and companies like EVgo, Electrify America, ChargePoint start deploying 800 volt uh, chargers with this new standard. Same with, uh, um, same with the V4 superchargers. So let me see if I can bring this up as uh, as you talk. Keep on talking. Let me see if Yeah, is. yeah. So so that's that's I think how we want to make sure that we're looking at this. We're framing these as two very very different issues, right? And I think part of what's confusing it is the name. I think this 
NACS name frankly needs to go. So initially I thought it could have been, it could at least be construed as a potentially racist microaggression, right? Because right now it's making people think that, oh, CCS1 isn't deployed in Asia. It is. It's deployed in parts of Asia. CCS1 isn't deployed in South America. It is. It's deployed in parts of South America. So to say this is the North American standard is misleading, right? Because I think what's happening is Tesla wants to tie it to their supercharger network. Um, and, and that's where it, where it gets to be. Even if you say, oh, it wasn't an unintentional you know, racist microaggression, it still isn't clearly communicating what the standard actually is. The standard is CCS being ported over to this new plug format, but it is 100% interoperable with CCS. So the video you're showing right now, you're plugging in your, your Hyundai Ionic 5 into a V3 supercharger. You can do that because V3 is bilingual. And I think we have the European Union to thank for that, frankly. Like I think they forced Tesla's hand Tesla, in order to get public funding in Europe, needed to adopt CCS. They had no choice in the matter. And so from that point forward, their chargers were all bilingual. They, they all spoke that CAN bus original, still proprietary Tesla supercharger lingo. But then they also had to speak uh, the CCS lingo. So that makes it 100% interoperable with all CCS vehicles. Literally all you need is a dummy adapter. No, no, just a physical adapter, just like these, uh, this old J1772 um, to the Tesla plug adapters. This is AC only. So you'll see a lot of these around. They're starting to make them for CCS, right? CCS1, uh, because all that's required <laughs> is a physical adapter unless that charging provider is creating some sort of a gateway to get in. And that's what Tesla is still doing, uh, right? We have to use the app to use that magic dock um, and we have to kind of go through their system in order to interface with their chargers. But otherwise they are 100% interoperable with CCS. Um, so, you know, with, with this, I think moving forward, that NACS standard name, like I said, it just doesn't make sense given what it's trying to communicate. Because I think, frankly, I think what Tesla is doing, the reason those automakers who are brokering a deal with them to access the superchargers, the reason Tesla is requiring their format plug in order for that deal to happen is because they want to tie that plug to their standard but it's not really, it's just CCS, you know, and that's, that's, I think the thing that we all have to understand now that it's out of the gate, now that that format is clear and free and open for everybody to use. And they've already given, uh, basically within their documentation information stating that you can use DIN and ISO, the 15118 standard, the cat's out of the bag. Now, now whoever wants, whoever's running a CCS charger can literally just hook up that new plug standard to it and any CCS compatible vehicle can use that charger. There, there shouldn't, I mean, obviously there's reliability issues within the CCS uh, networks, um, interoperability issues within the CCS networks, but in theory, right, as long as the charger is working properly and the car is working properly and they're both configured to CCS standards, moving forward, all we have is a single plug format standard now. So like you said, this is going to be the next year or two is the year of the adapter. That's kind of true. Basically, every every car built right now is going to need an adapter to use all of the, the plugs at this point. There's just unless you retrofit and pull all of those old CCS1 sockets out, you're going to need an adapter. Um, because so, I mean, that's... moving forward, it's one standard. So, and they had, uh, had the SAE were looking at uh, doing that fast tracking right by the end of the year. So, I mean, it needs to be ready, I would guess, before the vehicles, or at least well, I mean, the adapters, maybe not, but certainly when I, they're native. I mean, technically, it's already ready, right? I mean, Tesla has already been using the J1772 standard for AC. And so, 
as far as that plug is concerned, it's already ready for AC charging. Um, the, the only issue is on the automakers to insert a relay and a switch inside the car that switches between AC and DC. Um, and then the CCS protocol, the, the ISO uh, one, one five, what was it? 15, eight, ah, whatever. I'm going to run out of the numbers, but um, yeah, all, all, uh, all of the uh, um, DIN and ISO protocols are already integrated into the Tesla superchargers. They already support auto charge. They already support all of these other features. So it, it, I feel like the, the SAE homologation of the standard is super important, especially from a safety perspective. But I feel like it's mostly academic at this point. Like, I, I feel like everything is already in place. And the only reason we're not able to use the superchargers right now with the basic CCS adapter is because Tesla doesn't want us to. And the only reason, oh, and, and maybe this is an important point when I, this, this is probably the most important point, actually, Steve. So, sorry, I know nope, we want to cover it. want to make sure um, we cover it all. Um, Tesla owners who do not have the power line communication module installed in their cars will not be able to use public chargers with that NACS cable until they get that power line communication module installed. So essentially, if you cannot use a CCS1 adapter in your Tesla right now, you will not be able to use an NACS. And this is why I said I, I, I'm kind of concerned about the naming convention and how it's being presented as being confusing because I don't think a lot of Tesla owners realize that. If they roll up to an EVgo charging station, if they couldn't use that EVgo charging station with a CCS adapter, they're not gonna be able to use an NACS. And yes, the EVgo does still have their 50 kilowatt Chatamo adapters. That's technically the Tesla standard, which is not the NACS standard, right? So that's the old Canvas standard converted from Chatamo. You could use that, but you're not going to be able to use a 350 kilowatt CCS EVgo charger with a new Tesla plug on it until you get that power line communication module installed into your car. And from what I've heard from Tesla owners, that's kind of slow going and not a lot of people have that yet. So that's a and that's a big factor that I think has been missing from this discussion. Um, because I guess everybody just assumes that people will only ever want to use the superchargers moving forward. So, and I think that's, I, I think that's a mistaken assumption. So, Yeah. Well, especially, you know, some of the, as you get more into more different charging propositions with like the Rivian kind of network going to, you know, places that hopefully others won't because they want to hit those more kind of remote locations. You're going to want those charging networks to, you know, have access to them all because, you know, if that's the only option or it's the best option in that place, then that will still be better than a supercharger that's a hundred miles down the road. 